We're cranking it out. I'm waiting. Check the uh, stream, everyone. I'm working on it. I'm looking at it. I just see the picture. It's a good picture, though, George. I don't know what you're looking at, but... Oh, I think we're, we're on. It out. Good picture. It's on now. It's okay. up. There we go. We're live, folks. Oh, there we go. There we go. Gentlemen, we're here with Pluck and Rail. To make sure you turn off your microphones for a second, please, until I talk with you. All right, I'll start again. We're here with uh, the Long Island Bluegrass Festival 2020, hosted by the Babylon Citizens Council in the Arts and the Bluegrass Club of Long Island, and uh, production by Viper Studios. And we have some uh, awesome people uh, hanging out. Uh, discuss, we're going to discuss music, life, definitely not politics, and uh, other things. So anyway, the Long Island Bluegrass and Roots Music Festival is made possible in part by you. Your contributions will provide critical funding that will help Baca continue this festival and support other arts and cultural initiatives in our community. We can't wait to keep the music playing without you. Uh, we have the Long Island Bluegrass Festival.org, which is how you probably saw this in the first place. Uh, Long Island Bluegrass.org, which is um, the Bluegrass Club of Long Island site. And if you like to jam, we have a jam the first Sunday of every month at the Smithtown Brush Barn. And uh, let's see, BabylonArts.org. And uh, we have all kinds of emails and all that fun stuff on the website. So today's concert is going to be Pluck and Rail. Uh, and on Wednesday, this, uh, October 21st, we have Joe Newbery, and he's doing an old-time banjo workshop. And I think uh, three or four of the people that play old-time banjo in all of Long Island are on this com committee right now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so they'll definitely be there, as will I. Um, so it's very exciting. Uh, our first artist, we're going to do a little opener, a two-minute piece by... Um, uh, called Lazy John with Maria Fairchild kicking us off um, with the concert. Thank you so much, Maria, for being part of the uh, event. And uh, here we go. We're going to have uh, Viper Studios kick us off with Lazy John.
Nice work, Maria. Oh, thank you, Bill. <sighs> got to unmute myself before I start talking. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Maria, great performance. And I know you said you missed a uh, verse, but it still was, it was excellent. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, is that the song? Do you remember when the bee was flying around? Yeah. Me? Yeah. I think you were getting attacked by a bee. It's cool. uh, yeah. I was concentrating very hard. I don't look very happy because I was afraid I was going to get stung in any minute, but yeah. it's better that's you. live performance. Uh, I was thinking, I was thinking we're just going to let you be, you know, because, uh, oh, that's such a cliche. I'm sorry. Um, but that was a great performance. And I, and I rocked back and forth the entire time. I don't really know why. You know, I, I didn't stand still. It was a nightmare to, uh, to uh, mix because I kept rocking back and forth. And I'll find you. I'll see what we have next week. I might get, uh, like I said, I'd hope to get um, uh, Bob uh, Westcott in for a recording. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a bunch of great shows coming up, and we'll talk about those later. Um, so, Andy and George and Zach, we know how Zach got, at least I know how Zach got in the band. But uh, Andy and George, how did this come to fruition? How did this all, like, uh, I'd probably have George talk because he looks the, the most focused right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you're wrong. Go ahead, George. Take it away. Oh, he's stepping on my lines. Uh, Andy and I started the bands when uh, I was living just down the road from him, and uh, we we had to play. And I know he he's a great musician and killer on cello. I uh, had some songs I wanted to work through, so uh, we did, and we started uh, practicing. Recorded the first album. We met Zach at Nerfa, and uh, it was love at first sight. <laughs> that boy can play. So here we are. You know, I was thinking. Um, you had your B story when we did our set, and I and I hope it's in. The first song we played, a B landed on my ear, came down my cheek, and I was like, hey, "Yeah, yeah, together, man, you're a professional." And it landed. It was on my bottom lip for about two minutes, and I'm like, "What if I just if I inhale really quickly? Maybe I could bite it between my molars and just keep going." But eventually, it flew off to Andy's head because I think he thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> the, that was the, uh, right. He thought he was a big peonies flower. Yeah. 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 That's but okay. that would have been that could have been like your Ozzy Osbourne moment, right? Like the legendary like bite off the head of a bat. Like this guy just chewed up a bee live. <laughs> Spit it up. I mean, that's just that's that's a real musician right there. That My was, luck. That it was, was the last was... Guy on Earth, you know, and then that was it. That was the last. <laughs> and then we, the Earth just that was it. It was over. So I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, okay, let's start making some music. Um, these guys made music already, so they're kind of relaxed. They don't have to worry about warming up or setting up or anything like that. So oh, that's great. We're going to start off with uh, two songs, uh, one of which I get to play on. I play mandolin on. And uh, we have Bonesaw. And the second one is Ohio, which is very catchy. So you'll find yourself by the end of the set singing along with that one. The rest of them, not so much. <laughs> All right. Chuck Moses, kick us off, brother. Thank you. 
back at us and see the trees in a smoky breeze and a girl begins to blush Thank you, Charles Moses from Viper State. <laughs> <laughs> I always laugh when I hear that I mean, that high note when it goes, the whole thing goes up a, ho a whole step, and it was already a stretch for me when it was the other key. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I just enjoy laughing at myself. Sorry. I, I like the, I like colors on. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you were saying that you'd rather be wearing black there, but I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I, th I should have went. Uh, I should have went with black. That's okay always slimming that's why i know god how many cameras were on me <laughs> <laughs> all right we're going to talk music in just a second we have uh sean cullinan who is the uh president of uh the baca art center and the babylon citizens council in the arts i have a question for you sean before you start talking did you, were you one of the founding fathers of uh of baca founding fathers no <laughs> been around for a while, but not a founding father. Bach has been in existence for over 40, uh, I think around 43, 44 years, something like that. Longer? So, uh, hey, you could have started it when you were eight years old. Come on, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, uh, but Bill, thank you very much for all you're doing. And you and Chuck Moses and uh, everybody who are putting this production on. We've had a unusual year, as everybody knows. We won't get into that. So this has been fantastic getting this production week in and week out for the last uh, week in and week out for the last couple of weeks on the air so we really want to appreciate and say thank you very much uh, just want to give a shout out quickly to the bluegrass committee bill chuck moses uh, susan schwartz christian liz Mararki, alice cromedy and yours truly uh we've been working to put all this stuff together and it's really exciting to see pluck and rail i was just uh i put a message out but nobody can remember when did you guys play at the art center in lindenhurst it must have been it's about at least two years ago. Yeah, yeah. at least two years. I don't, I don't know, man. And it's like, ever since COVID happened, I can't even know. I, I don't even know what uh, what week it is, what day it is. I think it was a couple of years ago. Was that when yeah. we played with Frog Cafe, or was that when we played with Hebert Shebert? Oh man, Hebert, I don't Hebert. know. We had so many great shows there, but I can remember that first song you played tonight, uh, Sawbone, and uh, I said, "Oh yeah, that's right." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. 
maybe Bill, you know, was it Frog Cafe or Hebrew Cheese? I think maybe the last time was Frog Cafe. The time before that probably was Hebrew Cheebird. Okay. So actually Todd's on the stream, the YouTube stream, so maybe he remembers. He's been to everything. I don't know. If you're out there, Todd, go on the YouTube stream and uh, let us know. Oh, he bird. He bird, she bird. Okay. Oh, miss Todd's you guys. Before I use up my time, let me kick it over to Liz Mararki, who's our executive director at BACA, to tell you a little bit about uh, what we do at BACA and, uh, uh, and all the other great stuff we do. Liz. Hi, my name is Liz. I'm uh, the executive director for BACA. Uh, BACA does all kinds of programming from the Long Island Bluegrass Festival to our annual uh, Palmanoff Pow Wow and arts classes, theater, um, all kinds of events and art shows. Uh, of course, now things have changed a bit, so we're offering some virtual events, um, and we're happy to be here and able to do the our festival in its 18th year. So thanks, everybody. And if you'd like to follow us on social media and you aren't already, please give us a follow. It's Babylon Arts NY. That's both for both Instagram and Facebook. Very cool. Thank you. And uh, Susan, you out there? You want to add anything? Just that uh, uh, Baca is um, more than just the Bluegrass Festival and the uh, other things that uh, that Liz was talking about. We're a community-based organization. We have um, artist members. We now have an artist registry for uh, musicians, art, uh, artists, creatives, theater people, whoever wants. Um, and we're, especially now during these crazy times, we're trying to be more community oriented. So uh, we want everybody to join BACA and, uh, and be part of our community. Very cool. All right, we're going to make some more music. And uh, we're going to do two more songs. One's called OK. Uh, it's, it's just OK. It's not a great song. It's pretty good. That's, it, why, I didn't, that's why I didn't name it great, Bill. I know, I know. Thanks for, thanks for play, pointing out the obvious. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one is Nellie Kane, which I do enjoy. I, 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 I'm going to, if I have time, I'm going to, am I allowed to record still the Nellie Kane? Did that happen yet? Nick, Nick, put, um, Nick from Frog Cafe put a, a trumpet solo down on it. But I have another bluegrass one that I want you to put a fiddle. I, have a fiddle. I want to put a, a fiddle tune on, on one called "Pretty Little Princess." Isn't like, there supposed to be a, a vocal thing where you're all supposed to sing on Nelly Kane? Yes, yes, yes. If you want it, you can sing and you can put the. You, you could still do that. Yeah, we're not ready yet. Okay, I can I can procrastinate a little longer. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll give you the 24 hour notice. And then uh, when we come back after OK and Nelly Kane. We're going to introduce Phil Merkel from uh, WUSB, and uh, Phil's going to ask some interesting questions, I'm sure. He always has a, a list of questions. And I think uh, Chuck looked up on, on YouTube uh, when uh, Pluck and Rail played, and that was at Baca April 1st, April Fool's Day, uh, 2017, actually. Oh, no, sorry, 2018. Okay, April 1st. So, if, you know, I don't remember it being April Fool's Day, but I guess it was. So... Without further ado, we're going to play us some OK. This one's called OK. One, two, one, two. One, two. One, two.
golden hair Wonder why I even care About the who, what, why, and where It hurts so bad when you're gone My little backbone struck a cold Play another song Sometimes in my bed, get lost in my own head. My thoughts are dark, full of dread. Why curse entirely? Life's like a clarity, light a candle, and we'll see. Right now? Matatuck, Long Island, wine country. Whoa! Okay. Are we going to go uh, taste some wine afterwards, George? Yes, we are. Okay. Andrew, yes, we are. Thanks for listening, y'all, and thanks for the uh, Long Island Bluegrass Fest for having us. We're plucking rail. Happy to be here in Long Island. There's a little one called Nellie Kane. <laughs> Took it back. And they told me it was a mine in town. I want whiskey, black old ground. So come on down, Nelly King. Put me down. Daddy taught me how to fight. I could show my mama most every night. He said, Hey, little, watch what you think.
Just like the way I always live Well, I tried to take What you would not give The glass was sharp Clean I'm left Clean on the thoughts That were in my your dog's name again george <laughs> that was hannah i think she peed on andy she and, just uh, she she did she peed he, wished, he wished he didn't wear sandals that day <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> i love that dog she's a sweet dog yes it's all part it's all part of being a folk musician all those magical outdoor moments i know and that day george lost a chicken too that day. <laughs> that's right i forgot about that i i forgot about that as well yeah we lost <laughs> betty, we lost uh, betty. I, I was missing out on the eggs you know but anyway so great tunes man so tell us about um i don't know i know phil was gonna pipe in you got a little phil merkel from wusb What's up, Captain Phil, Phil? Captain Phil's Planet from WUSB here. Thanks again for bringing me on. Uh, yeah, I have, I, I have like, um, well, first of all, I need to say something nerdy. Um, the, the, uh -oh. first song, the first song in the set was Bone Saw, and all I can think about is the first Spider-Man movie when uh, Peter Parker fights Bone Saw in the wrestling ring. So I know that song wasn't about that, but <laughs> I need to drop that down right there and let everybody enjoy that. So... No, uh, when I first hooked up with you guys, you actually performed at the first live concert or live performers I ever put on the air on WUSB. And thank goodness uh, Andrew knew what he was doing because I sure didn't. And it, it, was a, it was a great show and I really loved it. But you've added members of the band, of the group. So have you adjusted it uh, since the... You were, you know, you were just a two a duo at that time when we first put you on the air. Have you adjusted it um, for uh, the for your bass player? Right, that's actually really good. Yeah, because the first album was like basically we wrote it as a duo, and then the bass was something I added on the album, and then later Zach just came in and played made it in his own. But these new songs, actually, we sort of just wrote together just because we were playing so many. Not that we would sit down and be like, we're writing these, but like we played so many gigs together, so many private parties, so many like fundraisers, you know, and all the different shows we were playing at one point, like two, three gigs a month. And so eventually, like now when I think of these new songs, it's like Zach really wrote the bass part, like for the most part. And so that's that. So like the new stuff definitely is is going to be more like that. We have Nick Lieto from Frog Cafe is playing on it. Bill's going to play on it. 
We have a couple other special guests too. So we're just actually thinking about maybe, I was just talking about with Chuck Moses about this and like we were talking about maybe putting sort of like Gillian Welsh drums on one or two of the tracks or a part of the tracks, you know, to go down that, I don't know if we want to go down that route, but I was just talking to, cause Chuck just texted me, he goes that when we was listening to Ohio, he's like, that needs, he goes, put drums on that, put drums on that. So we were just talking about that. So I don't know. So Bill, we're coming over to your studio. Uh, right, we'll, be, we'll be over tomorrow. Chuck from the bluegrass committee. <laughs> but, but from, from Viper, is, is he from, is he from the committee? Is that where he's from? <laughs> it's no true. Drums, no drums in bluegrass. <laughs> no, you definitely aren't in bluegrass. All right. There's no, right. I forgot. There's no crying in baseball and there's no drums in bluegrass. All right. So, Sorry. so is this a full collaboration? I mean, is, is there like three or four equal contributors to a particular song or is someone in uh, quote unquote charge of the song and you'll take advice, but the, the last word ends with the or original author? That's an interesting question. George, you want to take that one? Uh, <laughs> George writes the songs. I, I, you know, I, I write them and, um... and I ruin them. <laughs> it up. and then Pretty. zach reclaims them and makes them great zach is yeah. an absolutely brilliant brilliant bassist and he's in so many different projects and he's great to work with um he's really fantastic i just have to say that um live and on air um and he walks a mean dog he walks a mean dog Thanks, guys. <laughs> I think Zach, Zach uh, definitely contributes something that we didn't have before. Um, and I think Andy really likes having Zach in the band because uh, we, we played a friend's wedding recently. And Andy just, like, left for a song or two. And it was just, and, you know, I think he was, in, he was in line getting a drink at the bar. And Zach kind of fell <laughs> down for a while. So that's also a good benefit. <laughs> He was and getting, now, when, now when he's not there, now when he's, it's like, oh, no, he can't make the gig. We're doing this as a duo now. I got to work so hard now. Got to play all the bass lines now. But that was another thing that we had to figure out, too, is like now that when we first started, I was sort of just a de facto bass player, but playing it on those, just playing the cello, playing the low notes of the cello, right? And so then when I solo, it's like the low end drops out. But once Zach started playing, even the old songs, we had to sort of rearrange them a little bit because all of a sudden I was playing the middle part then which was not written or it was something that was written on the album. So now all these parts, <laughs> these parts I had to like learn how to sing. It's actually way easier to sing over just keeping a bass line going, you know, just a one in three or something like that than trying to play like these rhythm lines. So, but I did figure out that if once Zach is holding it down, then, you know, I could just go sh schmooze and, you know, listen to these guys play. So, so real quick, uh, Bill, Bill, you just cut me off. Cut me off when I, if I run too long. But, uh, but George, um, the difference between what comes, what you have in your head when you start the process, and the final thing when you leave the recording studio, is it close? Are you surprised? Um, is it? Is it? Does it? Do you let it evolve? What's that process like? Um. I, I, I like the songs that I write, obviously. Um, <laughs> but when I'm playing them in the studio and then we start playing with them, like Andy's a mad scientist who adds all kinds of like doubled lines and harmonies and ascending and descending. And then Zach can add, you know, s um, slap and like rockabilly stuff and bow. And they're, they're always a thousand times better. So um, cool. I think it's a great collaboration. And um I'm really psyched to get to play with these two guys because they're both incredible. Well, I think it's funny. Uh, I think the first time I heard uh, you play, George, was with your band. You had a like a full out five or six piece rock band, right? And and in a way, I like what they were doing. I think they were a great band. And I think, are you with them anymore? You still play with those guys? Uh, no, they all, all unfortunately went down. You broke up. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think your your voice lends itself to a little more space. You know, the, your timing, your voice, your phrasing lends itself to the kind of space that I think a three or a four piece, you know, adds to it. So I, en I enjoy I enjoy this configuration, and then I think Andy's a good arranger, so that, that helps too. You know, and then Zach has soul. You know, he adds the soul to, uh, you know, the groove and the soul. So thanks, Zach. So I guess, yeah, does that answer your question, Phil? 
Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for indulging me. And uh, it's 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 interesting because, well, I mean, and because at the same time, I see the cross-pollination between Pluck and Rail and Frog Cafe, you know, and I think that's just a cool thing that, but some of the members move through, move in and out between both worlds. And the fact that you guys can, can do that is just like, I don't know what the difference is. I guess the difference must be driving an automatic and driving a stick shift or something like that, you know, but it just seems like Andy, when, you know, something must click in your head, like now I'm progressive rock Andy, you know, now I'm bluegrass Andy, you know, and it's just like, it's, I, I find that amusing and, and extraordinarily impressive that you can do that. Cause it's usually like a, I can do one thing good and one thing only, and no, you can move around those worlds. And I, and I love that, you know, just, just great. So thanks anyways. man. Can I, yeah. Go ahead, George. Can I just say, speaking of the uh, cross pollination through the bands, by the way, I want to hear from Zach. Uh, he's, he's here, but one thing for <laughs> uh, Jefferson Ogata's out there uh, watching, who's a great, amazing DM, yeah, and awesome. he sh shoots, shoots a uh, great video. But with the cross pollination, we played a gig, Pluck and Rail played with Frog Cafe in Baltimore yeah. at Orion Studio. We finished up with uh, Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd, and that video is somewhere on YouTube. I, um, it's not, it's not out there. I have it on my computer, and I'll get it out there for us. There's yeah. actually another version of it, I think, uh, on YouTube from um, Baca. I think that's the first time we did it. I think that sounds about right. We got to get the uh, the Frog Cafe pluck. Yeah, we will. We'll, we'll get it out there. And thank you, Jefferson, for that. It was a great version of that at like 2 a.m. in the morning uh, at Nerfa with Zach on bass. That was a that was a great version, but it'll never be heard again because it's out there in in uh, music land. You know who knows. All right, we're gonna play a couple more songs. We're gonna do um, the execution of Nathaniel Mobs, and who was that, George? Uh, that was a gentleman who was put to death for killing his wife in England in 1853. So that's a nice little nice little murder ballad. Nice. You know, and I like the way it's obvious. A lot of times bluegrass songs, you know, have no, the names don't tell you how awful they are. You know, they're just God awful. You know, this is nice. You're like, this is the execution, Nathaniel Mobs. And then we're going to do Wash It All Away after that. And I think we're going to format it. Uh, we'll stop, talk a little bit. Then we'll do Marion, stop, stop and talk, and then let it out with Feed You to the Lions. That's our last song. So here we go with... Uh, uh, Charles Moses from Viper Studios is going to kick us off for the execution of Nathaniel Mobs. Yeah, a one, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> Swinging 
feel like leaves your throat.
Yeah, man. Great stuff. Really great stuff. All right. So my question is, um, what uh, what did the bride come down the the last gig you played? The bride came down and uh, wash it all away, or which one did she? Just curious, you know. Like, uh, if somebody hires you for a wedding, are these the songs you play? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because because. Uh, <laughs> when Eastbound Freight plays a wedding, it's like really hard to find a song that's happy. I mean, they all sound happy, right? So happy, like the banks of the Ohio, banks of the Ohio, right? It's like a really happy G major song, but it's about right. killing come, her down by the river. The banks of the Ohio, right? Exactly. Right, that's right. A murder ballad, you know, to wake everybody up. We we just only play for weddings if they don't really think it's can the marriage is gonna last that long. Then we just. <laughs> And so we just we just say, look, if you think it's just going to be five years or less, we're perfect for you guys. If you want this long haul or if you if you, we could play at your wedding and you still decide to go through with it, then you actually know it's true love. That's true. It, I mean, they, spend, they could spend a couple hundred bucks <laughs> or five thousand, ten thousand dollars with a real band, you know, like a jazz. Right. Band, and then it could be like, listen, that's going to last. But right. Not, you know, you're, we're going to just make you sad and. You know, and uh, do what you can do. But anyway, uh, you know. So far, wait, wait. I would just like to say, is, the real wedding question is: Do they play Pachelbel's Canon? I'm sure they can. Actually, I, I've played Pachelbel's Canon at least 50 times with Andy. Yeah, so, I, I, I owe the, I owe the estate of Pachelbel, <laughs> I, I, where I, I haven't really looked that hard from. I owe them about five thousand dollars. The estate of that's what every every bride wants. That one uh, going down the, going down the aisle, right? I will pack, say, pack, pack of pack of hell at Cannon, right? We have a we have a perfect, <laughs> we have a perfect record so far. All the weddings, all of our clients, super happy, wonderfully in love. So if anybody out there needs a band for a cocktail, <laughs> <laughs> pluck it. That's Work what should be pl right. Pluck and rail, wonderfully in love. <laughs> um, just that that maybe that should be the next album title. Um, I just wanted to be still together. There you go. I just wanted to say a quick hi by I have it um, to all my family watching down in Virginia. What's up? My mom and pops. My father's watching me like saying, why is that expensive cello that I bought for you in high school? Like you're sticking it in the dirt and having a dog rub against it. But pop, I'm sorry, buddy. But but thank you for, for getting that for me. And also my uh, cousin, uh, cousin and wit, Jacqueline and wit up at the, at the lake and and um, and um, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and have, have a chance. Uh, and all my um, family down, right? They're out in Montauk right now at a house. And um, my wife and, 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 and my in-laws. So miss you guys too. So it's so cool to be able to like play it, have a show playing where like everybody's, you know, could be watching from everywhere, even though it's not as good as playing live for real. But so we really appreciate you guys tuning in. Very good. Very good. Thanks. Uh, Pluck and Rail and Zach and and uh, and Hannah, right? Hannah, the dog. Yes. Yeah, that's funny, baby. From uh, Virus uh, Virus Central at uh, Viper Studios, uh, we're gonna do a little uh, a little uh, Mary on there. Chuck Moses. <laughs> hey, uh, everyone's calm and relaxed, and uh, you go know. vote. Go vote. I'm in. Sure.
together again Yeah, man, great performance. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. We'd really like to thank Baca for sponsoring this, the uh, Bluegrass Club of Long Island, and the Long Island Bluegrass Festival 2020. You know, 2020. But this is amazing. It's one of the highlights of the, of, of the year for us, and um, we really appreciate uh, appreciate Chuck Moses, Bill Ias, Viper Studios coming up and doing all this, and and Zach Swanson over there on the bass. The masked man, that's Mr. George Gear, and I'm Andy Sussman, and we are Pluck and Rail. And we're going to do one more for you. What's this one called? This one's called. All right. Little. This next one's called. <laughs> <laughs> Bill is handsome in his little studio. I've spent many hours in that little studio there, Bill, mixing uh, progress yeah. things in 7 8 and 11 8 and 9 8 and. It's been a while, man. I haven't been. We have, we have we have a frog album to finish too. There's that little detail. There's that little detail, yeah. All right. But our last time, the last time we really really got to hang out was uh, your 50th birthday, right? And been I know. Can you believe that? We ended up going up Martin Luther King weekend. We ended up going with um, 
my brother and um, George and Bill and a bunch of, of the guys. We went up to Burlington and we just did some brewery tours and we hung out and saw a really, um, what was the cover? It was a cover band, but they were just awesome. What was it, uh, what was it George? Pink Talking Fish. So Pink Talking right. Fish. Right. Yeah, like. Very obvious name, Pink F Talking Fish. Pink Floyd, Talking Heads, Fish, but like they just crushed it. They crushed, especially crushed the Pink Floyd, which was just like, like you were there it's like that music also just explodes live too but it was so much fun being there and, and, and that like thinking a, about that would be the last concert we saw right yeah pretty much i think so and this last time we all hung out really and uh the funny thing is andy's like you know he had all these dreams of going to all these great places and then he's like oh, let's go to burlington and then it was like <laughs> negative 75 <laughs> <laughs> i know i know and we made uh die. like if any one of us <laughs> Stop walking. That would be the last time we would have seen each other. We would, we would turn around and be like, where's Andy? I don't know. He probably died. <laughs> <laughs> keep walking. Keep walking. <laughs> oh, yeah. That yeah, was great to hang out. And um, I don't know. You should probably uh, – I'm going to thank big time. I'm going to uh, thank Baca for uh, supporting these, these uh, events and uh, keeping the Bluegrass Festival alive because – they could have easily said, nah, let's do something else or whatever. So thank you so much for keeping the Roots music and the bluegrass music alive, uh, even though it's virtually. And, uh, you know, we can't hang out and breathe on each other anymore. That stinks, you know. I, you know, and we were talking about, like, what not to, not to eat when you have a mask on, right? And locks and cream cheese with onion. Don't. <laughs> and have a mask. Never good. <laughs> You know, and uh, does uh, Baca any, want to interject? Anybody want to um, say anything before we get going? Uh, just a big thank you again, Bill. You, Chuck, and everybody involved. It's been a, another great evening. And uh, I just wanted to mention the fact that we didn't we didn't touch on it. Uh, this year we did something a little different with the Bluegrass Festival. Uh, by going around Long Island, you were in the Maritime Marine uh, um, Museum in, in West Sayville. You were in Setauket. You were in uh, Sylvester Manor out in Shelter Island, and of course the Art Center in Lindhurst. So it was nice to get around Long Island just to see a little bit of different stuff. So it added a lot to the festival this year, and uh, we really appreciate all you're doing. And uh, we got a couple more weeks to do this. So, uh, right, so our next performance, uh, well, actually our next workshop is this Wednesday with Joe Newberry, and then the Wednesday after that, the 28th, is uh, Songs and Guitars by Joe Newberry. If you don't know who Joe, Joe Newberry is. He's a fantastic musician and a fantastic teacher, more than anything. Uh, you'll love you'll love working with him. And then this uh, next Saturday, we have Buddy, Miriam, and Backroads, and that's live at the Baca Arts Center. And if you don't know what that is, I highly recommend seeing a show there. Um, it's an intimate, maybe 100 people when there's no COVID, 100 people, 25 people. <laughs> <laughs> COVID, uh, <laughs> and then the week after that on Halloween we have the Falco brothers. Uh, Andy Falco performs with the String Dusters, and his brothers are fantastic musicians and uh, uh, you know great personalities. So the Falco brothers on October 31st. So you can all get in, and I really want everybody to have some sort of costume on, you know. For that last performance, you know, I, 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 Sean needs to dress up as, uh, I don't know, George's dog. <laughs> I'm as Bill. You can do that. That's fine. Yeah. By the way, can I ask you, Bill, uh, this Wednesday is the old time banjo workshop? Yes, you definitely. You and Maria are the only I'll people that play professional, you know, old time banjo. And, uh, and you know what's nice? There's nothing new about old time banjo. That's the cool thing, because <laughs> it's old time. All righty. So you mean that I play new time banjo? I don't know. I I I, I uh, you play. <laughs> I like, I like too, right? taking the banjo to new places. Okay. <laughs> if I were to say musically, if somebody were to say, do you know three people that play old time banjo? You would be the only three I know that do on Long Island, you know, or or around this area. So. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. Well, we are we are a rare breed. That's true. That's true. That's true. I'll see y'all Wednesday then. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Right. All right, let's kick off. Uh, this is our final song. We have uh, "Feed You to the Lion." So George, kick us off. Uh, tell us about this song because this is the last thing we have to say. So we're actually signing off with "Feed You to the Lions." What do you say, George? 
Uh, it's a odd song about fatherhood. And uh, I would just like to say, early voting starts next Saturday, October 24th in New York. So go vote. We will. It's more important than our, uh, than our thing. And, yeah. and um, come see us live. And I hope uh, we can see everybody at live shows in 2021. And thanks to Baca and Long Island Bluegrass Festival and Chuck Moses and all y'all. Uh, much appreciated. And anybody that made it this long, uh, after this is over, we're going to ha- present all these uh, concerts without all the banter in between and the, the nonsense of us talking. And uh, they'll be in high definition on YouTube. Uh, I know right now we're streaming all these concerts, but if you want to wait, that's fine too. And be sure to uh, go to the, the go to the uh, libluegrassfestival.org. And uh, if you can spare any change for a donation for these concerts, that would be amazing. Okay, so uh, only if you could spare it, though. So thank you so much, and here we go with Feed You to the Lions. What's this one called? This one's called Feed You to Lions. It's a good one. Check it out.
empty I'm far from ace to 33 The sun one day Shine like yesterday Living this whole trinity Living this whole trinity Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, y'all. We're plucking real. Two. One. Two.